Darcy and Jane coach these guys, right? Darcy does it. She does it one day a week, and Jane's got it three days a week. So let's see. Uh, why don't you just show us your level three bars? Got warmed up and ready to go. Three bars. Um, so, again, a lot of stuff in there, okay? Uh, the very first thing when, when we talk about what's important is the glide in this routine is one of the most important things in this bar team, okay? And that's because your kids are going to glide in the next level, the next level, and all the way up, okay? So do, uh, do your glide, just do your glide for us. Okay, that's good. Now, one of the things we're making sure they do on a glide is they start nice and straight, okay, is when she jumps up and catches the bar, go ahead and jump and catch it, okay, that there's some pressure on the bar right here, okay, she's got her hands, she's got one thumb around, she'll probably move that up there, but right now she's got some pressure against the bar, she's holding onto the bar, but she's pushing against the bar, okay, and that's really important from the standpoint of technically, when she pushes on the bar, what does that do to her hips? It gets them back, right, because the glide is essentially, it's a glide swing, we want to create as much swing as we can. So we get the hips back over here, then they're going to swing, and they'll be farther out over here, which then the kip is going to swing up easy. Okay? So from a technical standpoint, we got to have some pressure on the bar when she catches right there. Do that like okay, right. Can you guys see that? Okay, she catches it. She's kind of pushing on it a little bit. She's strong when she hits the bar. Okay, she hits the bar, and there's tension in her body, and so it has some pressure on it. That's key. Um, when you watch kids that don't do it really well, they'll kind of put their hands over the bar a little too much, and they just kind of sog in a little bit, and they just drop down into their glide. They don't really start the glide back, okay? Because remember, glide is a pendulum swing, so that's the old quarter on the string, right? And we want this to be high over here, which means we have to be high over here. Okay, do one more. So her hips have to come up in the back, get some pressure when she catches, and she's down, okay? Um, Have you ever heard of like, <coughs> to teach it as a, like, a block touch? Like a and then push? What's the, then what's the downfall of that? Like block a bar and then catch yeah. the bar like that? Mm -hmm. um, it's, I, I think the concept is it's the same concept. Hey, you know Katie. what I mean? Um, we do one of the very first things we do with the kids is block back off the bar. Sure they're not catching like that. We get a shoulder angle in here. Okay, now the hips aren't back as much and the glide's not going to go out as much. So you want a nice, hollowed, rounded, pushing on the bar position right here. Okay. So that's the jump part. We do the jump and the bounce back. Um, we'll stack up a lot of mats right here in blocks. I showed you guys that one before where they jump, push, catch, and they hit the block. Does everybody know what I'm talking about? Okay, that one's important. Uh, the next thing is make sure that your kids are strong enough hold that position so it's hanging the bar the whole time. Come on. Let's see your hollow hold. Okay. Right. So, okay, that is really good. Chest in, putting the bottom one right there. Good and down. She'll probably hold that 25, 30 seconds, okay? So that's been trained into her, all right? That is not normal. Okay, you got to condition those body positions because when you add swing to it, it's only going to get harder. So that's this side of the glide. The other important thing is 
take a look at a glide right here when she catches and pushes. Okay, jump and catch and push again. Okay, whatever errors you see right here in this pressure before she swings, you're going to get in your tap swing in the back of your tap swing. Okay? It's essentially the same thing right here. All right? There's a pressure on the bar, there's a hollow shake, there's a push back, and then there's a swing down. On a tap swing, you change your shape. But on a glide swing, you just hold. But this phase of that swing is the same. Okay? So whatever errors you see your kids make on this, they're going to probably make on a tap swing. So if they jump off and they catch the bar, and say lift your head up a little bit, kind of stick your chest out, arch a little bit. She's, she has a hard time getting in the long shape. But, you know, they catch the bar, and they're, they're, they're like this, okay? They push, and then they glide, and then uh, just the yuck shape. Hang on the bar right here. And, uh, I'm not sure she can even stick the butt out. There it is, right there. Okay. That position right there, they catch the bar, and they're in that position when they glide. Okay, you're in trouble, all right? Because they're going to get in that same exact shape in the back of their swing. And then not just the tap swing, but uh, you pull it on the bar. Okay. We'll do a giant. Here we go, giant. Okay, this is the first one. All right, so pretend we're coming down on a giant, and she's pushing on her giant, okay? And she falls right here on a push shape of a giant is the same exact shape. There's your tap swing position, and there's her catch on the bar shape. Okay? So that just kind of reinforces that concept that when you're teaching a glide, you're not just teaching them the glide. Okay? You're teaching them the tap, you're teaching them the giant at the same time. So just be aware of that. Uh, let's uh, look at the front of the glide real quick. Do your glide again. Okay. That's pretty good. Uh, remember, we all know that the front of the glide, your grab one there, should extend. Okay, we want it to swing. I like to see the glide hold a nice shape. Stay close to the floor on the way out. And then it should rise up to horizontal right there. All right, so you get that nice down lifting action where they're pretty much laying flat on the table right here. And then they're going to be able to do a good kip from that position. Right there, okay? A lot of errors, what you'll see on a glide is kids will hold their legs up too high at the beginning. So jump and catch that bar again. So right here, they pike a little too much. And then they're up too high, and then at the end of the glide, they drop, okay? And so you get that kind of drop, and then what happens is they drop, and then by the time they get back to the bar, they've swung back too much on their kit, okay? So, do glide again. That's pretty good. So there's a good lift in it right there. Like that. Okay, now see, can you do like three glides in a row? Jump and catch and glide out and glide back and glide out and glide back and see the piece through. Tighten, hold it, tighten, hold it, tighten. That's pretty good. Okay, so see if you can get them to swing a glide like that. Because again, a glide is just like any other swing. And when you do a set of tap swings, your tap swings should progressively build and get higher. Well, your glide swings should do the same thing. Okay? And test your kids on that and watch them because most of them, Glide, well, the, the best, biggest glide would be the first one. And then they would get progressively smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, and that's a lot of that is the lack of strength in their core to hold that position while they're swinging right there. Okay, but uh, again, the goal of the glide, the main goal of the glide, is to get us into a position out here in the front where we can do a good kick. Okay, and do it again. And that position is flat with our hips nice and high. Okay, so our hips are right here nice and high. Because from here, now to bring your toes to bar. Okay, that's going to be the next phase, and we want the hips to be up nice and high. All right, so if we get into some of this stuff where we kind of arch like that, then this happens, and we're in this position. We don't want to kip from there. So it's flat, open, then the legs move, then we go. Okay, got it? Okay, now let's see your glide and your pullover real quick. Any questions else on the glide, you guys? Alright, scratch good. And your pull. You know something bounce right there? Is that okay? I'm not a Marcos yet. I know nothing, but I see you guys just say it's okay, but it's not a good for strength. Yeah. Obviously not. You can come back. I think you can bounce. You can come back and stop. I don't think there can be a reduction in there for a pause of up to a certain length. I think you can't stop. You can't, like, 
sat for a long period of time, like, you are allowed to stop. pause. Right. And right. some judges can, specifically like a pause. Right. Which can, makes right. Sense. right. And again, that's. Um, I'm not going to get into the judging of it because we just did that. We last that. You know, we go in the year. We had judges deducting for things. The last major they shouldn't have been deducting on. So, and uh, I talked to the head judge, and hopefully we got it squared away. So, we can talk about it later. But it was in the tasseling stuff. Some of the judges were misinterpreting how to judge the tasseling. Let's see how she's curled and tucked under, and now she does a good abs curl right there, and then pulls over. So there was just a good pull in here. Now and that comes just from your conditioning. Okay. For this one, that comes from Darcy doing tuck touch down straights on the wall bar. And making sure that those kids, when they initiate that leg lift action, it's from a curling, hip under curling, and not a like that. Okay. Um, let's see the front hip circle. Um, front hip circles, when we talk about the importance of front hip circle, I mean, they're important because they're in the bar routine. Okay, a lot of coaches hate front hip circles. They took them out of the level four routine, which I think is good because, again, what I didn't like in the level four routine was you didn't cast out of the kip, you know what I mean? It'd be fine for me if they went kip cast, came back down, and then did a front hip circle and a cast out. That would be fine, okay? I don't mind the front hip circle because I like the, what it helps them do with the end of the front hip circle. It helps them learn how to keep their hands moving, hold a pike position as, around the bar, and that helps with your kipping and casting. That's it. Right, and that's not too bad. She's starting pretty good, okay? She's falling pretty good here. Right. She's just got to get the timing of the pike, which is really pretty close on that, to snap just a little bit faster. And then you just, you watch, her hands are a little slower than the rest of her body. And that's what leads to that kind of where they come up, and she's doing a pretty decent front hip circle. But she comes up, and her chest is beating her hands over the bar. And so her hands are behind, and then she has to lay on the bar. Okay. What you'd like her to see her do is to keep her hands moving. You almost got to move your hands like twice on a front hip circle. So stare at her hands right there. You see them kind of move around the bar, move around the bar. And so she has to work a little bit on a little faster hands. And on that last hands, is push the bar down right there. Okay? And you can help them by spotting them into that, just by getting them into this position and, and getting them to feel that little end of that front hip circle right there where they pull and they're shifting that weight. And those knuckles are still moving. You see our hands just kind of dragging behind a little bit. There, I am. Okay, do it more. And again, a front hip circle is one of those where a lot of coaches don't like it because it's it's just time consuming. You know what I mean? You gotta spend time on it. Okay. Another thing I like about the front hip circle is when you do a lot of seesaws, but seesaw. Okay, just stay nice and straight. I'll just kidding. Okay, you do a lot of seesaws like this for your front hip circle, and they're doing all this work. One of the things they're learning to do right here is they're learning to cast, too. Okay? They're learning to keep their arms straight. They're learning to push on the bar. And you're eliminating the fear of falling over the bar. Right, we know how many kids you get up on the bar like this, and you try to tip them forward, and they're ready to pee their pants. They don't want to go over the bar like that. Okay? So this is a, you know, push it. And again, that's one of the things I really like in the front hip circle is that just that nice pressure and falling right here, holding that shape. Okay. Um, let's do, uh, so again, when we talk about importance, we're just talking about importance, glide, really important. Um, front hip circle, you know, I mean, spend time on it. You, again, if your goal is to get a 9-9, you're going to have to spend a lot of time on it. Okay. Um, just make sure that your kids are understanding how to fall on the bar straight right there, create a shape change. Tell your kids too on a front hip circle there's just one shape change. Okay? It goes from straight to a pike. That's all it is. And the timing of the straight to the pike is what's going to circle your body around the bar. Okay? You essentially, there's a lot of drills that you can do where you don't even really start with your hands on the bar. Okay? We had, uh, I don't think you've done this one with these guys, but we did it with uh, yeah. a group a while back where we actually took one of the other bars and we put it up here. Did you guys do that one? Yeah, and it works pretty good. If you get them up like this, you take your hands off the bar and put them by your ears. Okay, all right, and they're on the bar, and they're holding on to a bar up there, and they let go, and she falls, put your arms up, and she falls free like this for just a sec. Now, pike. 
then she pops. Okay. And so picture like a whole, you know, one of those little bars up on a mat stack, and they're just straight, and they, and they let go, and they just fall, and they, they disciplines them to fall straight and wait long enough before they pipe. And essentially, you're just creating long body, short body, and it swings around the bar. We've done it also where you grab the back of your thighs. Yeah. And just and fall. That, just fall and just go around. Grab the back of your thighs to get around. Amanda, they have to lean. Yeah. But, uh, so again, you know, we, we don't get really too so concerned. We don't, I don't know. I've done front hip circles with thousands and thousands of drills, but really, if you just get them, a lot of them is too. Is just, just if you can get to spotting the end of it, help them with the time. Right there, where you just kind of keep their hip close to the bar for them, but you just kind of help them with the timing. There, and then you kind of give them a snap and a roll in, and they'll start to figure out the hand push right there. And eventually, she'll do it straight. Away. <coughs> so, again, you just spot it enough time to start to get that movement around. Um, Cash shoot through. Cash shoot through backwards. Okay, good. Again, not too, you know, pretty standard right there, basics. Um, do your leg cutting, do your leaning. All right, again, that's important that kids are comfortable with leaning over the bar on that. That's just the main thing. Kids will struggle with this skill if they're a little afraid to lean over the bar. And they don't have the flexibility to get into that good position right there. So I know you guys do like drag ups and shoot throughs on blocks and stuff like that. Okay. Um, do your uh, swipes over. Again, we've talked about this one too. I, I love this skill in this routine, and a lot of people don't. A lot of people complain about it or whatever. But um, again, you get to upper level gymnastics, okay? And you can take anything you can do on bars in this grip going backwards. You can do in this grip going forward, okay? So essentially, half of your bars <coughs> is in this grip going the other direction, okay? And how how much do our kids do? In this grip? They do this in level three. Nothing in four, nothing in five, nothing in six, nothing in seven, nothing in eight, and then all of a sudden, five years later, you turn around and you want to teach them how to do a front giant? Okay, that's a mistake. All right. You know, the only reason they did that was because there's just not really easy things to put into a compulsory routine where the masses can get on a bar and do stuff in front grip. Okay, so I know I told you guys this before, but spend time in this grip. Okay, we spend a lot of time in this grip conditioning. All right. Again, whatever you can do in conditioning, do it in both grips. Okay. So if you're doing pull-ups, have them turn around and do pull-ups in this grip. Okay. We do uh, planche rockers, do them in this grip. We do handstand holds on the wall or on the bar and on the wall. It's like half-half every time. You know, they'll go up. If it's a 40-second handstand, they do 20 here and 20 here, or 30 and 30. Okay. So just make sure you're getting your kids in this grip, because a lot of times, I mean, we, we got a 10 uh, that came to us this summer. And, and I don't know how many kids have come, have come over and they're 15, 16 years old and they, they can't even get in front grip. You know what I mean? They barely can turn their hand and get in front grip. Remember, being a guy gymnast, you spend tons of time like this. If you watch the low level boys compulsory stuff, it's a lot of it's in front grip. Okay? Guys actually learn a front giant before a back jump. And, and it's a lot easier, actually. Really? Yeah. And it's and one of the reasons it's less scary, actually, okay, because you get to see as you're coming up on this side of the bar, everything's right in front of you, okay. Instead of picturing going backwards on a back giant, now you're going backwards upside down and everything's back behind you, okay. So if you ask guys, they're like, yeah, front grip's not a problem, okay. So make sure you're doing a lot of your stuff, a lot of your conditioning, things like that. We do, you know, wiggles and hanging, get them hanging in front grip. That way you're developing that flexibility in the wrist and the shoulder so that later on they can grab the bar and grip. Um, so do your stride circle. Again, I'm sure you guys all have thousands of drills on that, so you won't spend a lot of time on that. Just make sure there's just good pressure again on the bar right here. They're tight. Okay. And a lot of times you see the air at the end of that is that, again, her wrists are just a little slow. Okay, so she's coming up and her leg is hitting the bar 
and her arms are still behind. She hasn't yet shifted her wrist. Okay, so one of the things you want to make sure your kids are doing are learning to shift their wrist really big. Learning to shift those wrists right there and have pressure and get on top of the bar. If you watch our stride circle, that's not really happening real well. She's coming up and using her leg to sit on the bar and then finishing and then shifting. Um, okay, so stride circle important just because I love the front grip work in that. Uh, let's do a back and circle. Again, this is another one of those really important parts of the, uh, the routine. Okay, so we try to spend a lot of time on getting them to understand keeping pressure on the bar, circling backwards on the bar. All right, so pull over here. It's this part right here where they're going back on the bar, right here where you want to make sure there's still pressure pushing on the bar right there. Okay? So they're holding that shape and pushing on it. This is the point right here where you'll see a lot of beginners and stuff when they're starting to back hip circle is they kind of relax into the bar, let your head go back a little bit. Their head kind of leads and they just wrap their body around the bar with a pipe and they're not really pushing on the bar. So, stuff like this where they're just holding the shape, pushing on the bar like that, it's excellent. Get the circle. Okay. Focusing on the head position on that. Kind of see her head likes to go back a little bit. And that's normal. Kids are going to do that. Uh, one of the reasons why they throw their head back is to help initiate the backward circling action. Okay? What you want them to do to create the backward circling action is push the bar that direction to get the shoulders to go back and get the head to drop this way so that the weight of their head drops into the circle that way to get it to go around. Your head kind of starts in and then just kind of goes back just a little bit. Pretty good. Dude. And then the, again, the undershoot part of that is really, really important. You can see her kind of break down on that. You see as she's going under, it kind of lets the head go back, kind of loses pressure on the bar, and then gets into a pipe. And so the bar kind of travels down, gets down to like her knees, and then she shoots off. Okay. That's long. That's hard. Um, pull over on the bar. Kids are, uh, this is where the old, um, you know, like the strongest kids are always the best compulsory gymnasts, all right? Because the kids that are just pure strength kids, they can just get through this stuff really easily. See if you can lean back and hold your legs in the corner without fighting. Just go upside down to a can. See how many of your kids can actually just hold this shape right here? Squeeze and go upside down. That's pretty good. She let her head go a little bit. Do it again. That one is a little hard. She kind of fell out. Okay. But test them with that and see if they're strong enough to hold to get upside down. Okay? Because again, <clears throat> treated back hip circle under shoot kind of like a one and a half back hip circles. And then when they're in the candle, grab on there. When they're in the candle here, <clears throat> okay, then once they're in the candle, this is where you want to teach them what to do to make their body go up and off the bar. Okay, so if something is going to go up in that way, that means something has to go down in that way. What's going over there? The bar, right? Yeah, the bar has to go down in that way, so pull the bar that way. There you go. Right? So if she learns to pull the bar and move the bar over there, then the result will be her body going over there. Really important when they start to get into clear hipping that they understand what moves their body. Okay, we talk about that before a lot of times too. 
on bars. A lot of times kids, good bar swingers, they're not always, they, they, they get their body into a position, into a shape, and they get it swinging, and they learn to, that's what people say is they're working the bar, is they're moving the bar, and the resulting stuff of the bar moving is their body moving, okay? This thing is attached to the earth with big giant bolts. So when you pull this, is it gonna go anywhere? No, it's not moving. Okay, but you tell them to move it. Okay, tell them to move the bar. Okay, but when this moves, what actually is gonna move? That's where you gotta set some stuff out here, little uh, foams to block off of. We put cones on, or tennis balls on a cone where they poke the tennis ball first, then they come up. Okay, I know these guys right now, Jane's doing a lot of grab on real quick. Um, Treat the kipping action separately. Teach your kids the kipping action. When I say the kipping action, okay, I treat it's it's all separate stuff. So this is a glide to right here. Okay, so make sure your kids understand too that this isn't a kip. They're not kipping right now. They're gliding. Okay, so they're going to glide to here, and now the glide's done and it's stopped. And so now the kip action takes place, and that comes with a swinging, a swinging of the legs. Okay, so she's going to swing her legs to the bar, and if there's enough swing. It'll just swing her right up the bar right there, okay? And you have to, you know, drill that a lot. But the main thing, one of the best ways is to do a short kip. So put a block here underneath them, put a bar underneath them, okay? And so they're just freezing from here. And now she learns to swing her legs. And they're going to swing up the bar right there. And then she's going to hold that shape, okay? So again, where she's at in that stage, and I wouldn't have her do thousands of those because it's not going to help. You know what I mean? She needs to do more of the short kip stuff, more of getting the action of swinging her legs up the bar, getting a little stronger with the arms so they just hold the bar into her legs a little bit more, and then she won't be far off from that. Okay. Katie came up with a clever thing. We put a star on top of our cone that's colored, and she calls that the nail polish, and she says the glitter is on the bar. So she's like, oh, you didn't get your glitter. So they have you know, to hit so that you get first. You your nail polish and, and your glitter nice. to have pretty toenails. Right, exactly. Because you don't want to give a bad toenail. No, that would be stupid. Point of that. But, uh, and again, and, and so where she's at right now, you know, don't, don't rush through those phases. That's one of the most important things I can emphasize to you guys. You know, I, don't really, I mean, we can go over a bunch of drills a day, but that wasn't really the point. Um, but, the, you know, make sure you don't rush that, okay? Look where that's at right now. And, and from a realistic standpoint, she's still months from doing a kit. You know what I mean? And that's fine because if, if you get to where their first kit is a straight-armed up-bar kit, okay, you've done your job right, okay? You, you look at here's the, where that kit's going to be. And so you can either slowly move, and then their first kit is going to be like this, or they can do a not great glide, kind of bent arm up the bar kip to here, and you're still over here, and now you still have all this work to do to get to this kip that you want to get in the end, okay? So don't rush through that, all right? And that's not, I mean, that's not exaggerating at all. I mean, those, those if you take your time, your very first kips will be a straight arm right up the bar kip, okay? And they'll go through a phase, you know, where, I'm your kip again. Where they will scratch and they'll get like right here and then they'll drop off. You know what I mean? And, and right here and drop off. And then they kind of keep working its way up. But you're still drilling the swing of the legs, the hold of the pike, and all that stuff. And then eventually it's going to be like, man. And our first kip's going to be like, yeah, right there. Okay, don't give in to that. Get up at any means, kip, and put your, bend your arm, put your rib on the bar. You know, some kids will still end up going through that. I mean, it's not a 100%. But <coughs> Um, so the other thing, so the, we got a level three group here. They're working on their routine stuff like we talked about. Emphasize your glide, your circling. They're working on their kipping. Um, I would also, at this stage too, is make sure these guys are getting into some handstands on here. Okay, and they're just eliminating some fear and some stuff like that when they're doing that. Um, they can be doing, uh, you need to start squat on stuff with them at this time. Uh, make sure you're safe. Okay, you're spotting it, you have blocks over here, wedge mats, stuff like that in case they fall over or if they're safe. But uh, you want to start them leaning over the bar, start squatting on. 
uh, from a cast to hand stance standpoint, it's not really a cast to hand stance, but when kids are like this age. Don't be afraid to run here. Pull over. Your turn. Spin around. There you go. Is don't be afraid to get them up on the bar and get in a handstand at this time. Okay. One of the best ways to do it is to have their shoulders shrugged down. So shrug your shoulders down. I tell them to pinch their jaw right here with their shoulders. <laughs> so the bar is down their hips, and they lean forward. So she's going to lean. She's going to squeeze. And I'm going to lift your legs, and you're just going to push with nice straight arms. Okay. Good hands. Okay. Nice and tight. Uh, this athlete has done a thousand handstands. Most threes will not look like that in a handstand. Okay. Um, but again, shrug down there. So what I like about this is you're just getting her comfortable with leaning over the bar. Okay. And the scary part of a cast is right through here when you're pushing right here and you're over the bar right there. Okay. And so just kind of walk her through that. Do that a handful of times. Okay. So take five minutes. One of your bar workouts, they're all doing a station, and you hop over on a bar station like that, and you're getting those guys through some nice shaped straight arm handstand work, just eliminating that fear stuff. Okay. We were talking about it the other day, the staff is, uh, you know, a lot of times kids get to a certain age, and um, it's hard to get them to do scary things. So um, I really recommend, and we're going to try to do it a little more too is to get introduced some of that stuff sooner. So the kids, uh, you know, it's a lot easier to teach a nine-year-old to do something scary than it is a 13 or 14-year-old. So, and again, it's the balance is, you know, you don't rush your technique so fast that you're doing stuff so poorly that you're not gonna be able to advance and stuff like that. All right, but, you know, over the years, and we've been talking about it, find out more and more, um, you know, you can spend hours and hours on technique and this and that, and if the kid's mentally not going to get the stuff done, then it doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? So, from that standpoint, you know, get those little threes, get them up on a bar like that, get them in, in that grip here for you. Do this with them for a second. Again, if you're doing it, you know, always keep in mind, turn your hands in front grip. There you go. Okay, do two like that, and then do one like that. Or two like that now, push. Uh, she's working front grip right there, nice and tight, chest in, legs in. Right. She's getting comfortable with that right now. As they come down, one of the things you want to make sure they do lean for, by the hips out, right, is these are little Play-Doh kids, so make sure you're pushing them and getting them in the position they want to get in right there. Okay, that's the nice thing about working with little ones that weigh like your little okay. They weigh, you know, 40, 50 pounds as you can manipulate them and put them in their shakes. So, um, but uh, I'm trying to think, level threes. What else with Jane are we doing with the threes? Um, power holds and arch holds. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, swinging. This is when you want to start swinging, too. Um, so, like, our kids go over there and show us how you climb up and you do your hollow. So, we have that station set up on block, and they just climb themselves up there. And they hang. And then they do your hollow hold. Slow motion wiggles. Now let's see the wiggles. Okay, so they're just starting to learn to shake that. Okay. Now, technically, what do you guys see her doing on that? See so her making a little bit of an error in her shoulder angle right there? And that's normal. Okay. You gotta get good. Is they want to pull, and the next shape from here they want to do is they want to initiate their body coming up with this joint instead of leaving that where it is. Get them to contract in their chest. Okay. So again, you got to spot those two wiggles. So you got to kind of push the ribs in right here, keep mm -hmm. their armpits flat so they're nice and shaped. You're getting them in those positions. Like that. Okay. Good. Right, good. And then once they can shape those and get in those right shapes, you know, these guys done like tap swings on the block. Getting close to that probably. It's 
hard. Should be. <laughs> Is, you know, you can put your two blocks up, have them stand in the back of the block in a hollow, and then they jump, do one tap swing out, tap swing back, and land back on the block. And just start building it from there. Um, so start them swinging, start them getting comfortable leaning over the bar. Obviously, lots of kipping. Sometimes there is a phase there where the kipping kind of takes precedent too, because you're talking about threes, they're coming twice a week, three times a week, or whatever. Okay, and then we were doing that because you have all this stuff laid out you want to do. And then Jane and I, and Jane's like, well, if you keep doing this, I'm not going to have kids. And it's like, yeah. So now you have to kip every day. You know? um, I think that's about it on bars for this level. And again, I didn't want to go through a bunch of drills and stuff like that, but just mainly just so you guys can kind of see what's important with that. Um, how about some tumbling? <laughs> All right, we'll just spin around and face that way. All right, good. Come out here on the magic line. <laughs> All right. Um, just step out here. Let's see. First, let's see a kick to hand stand. We'll face that way. So, again, just, just a quick refresher. Um, make sure when we're kicking the handstand that we're nice and stretched, everything's lined up, okay, nice and tight. Hold that leg up here. Tight. Okay, now leave that all lined up. Now use this leg and push. And we're good. Nice okay. Can we talk about the lever a little bit? I still have kids coming from Olympiads that do straight leg levers. Yeah, make sure at this stage, you guys, that you are getting this front leg bent. Um, you guys remember a few years back there was straight legged compulsory and they finally taken that out. Okay. And the main purpose of that is is um, kick the handstand and keep this leg straight. Okay. But um, stepping on that straight leg like that, and that's where everybody was, you know, was worrying about the T and the lever and keeping everything in line and stuff like that. And that's got to happen. There has to be a line through that body right there. Okay. But when this handstand turns into a round off and into a front handspring, one of the most important parts about it is that her legs right here are driving, pushing, and this leg is going to drive and push and get down on this leg right here. Okay, and She's going to go through this position right here, and then that leg's going to drive, and that's going to turn into a front handspring. Okay. So that just... Uh, if you start with that stray leg, lean, fall over, you're just eliminating all that training from day one. Okay. So do your hands again. Make sure, stand up straight. They're nice and lined up. Okay. Make sure that they start from right now and they're understanding that this leg, <laughs> that this leg has got a job to do and it's going to drive and push her forward. And that's another thing that, that comes up too is, you know, we talked about, we did one last year where we talked about drilling all the levers, put your blocks out, do all your levers, stop in your tee, do a bunch of freeze like you have tee. Stop and freeze. Make sure you're drilling this, bend your knee a little more, square your hip up just a little bit. Okay, so she's tight, she's lined up. She's trying to square this up. Okay, and do all those and do all those drills. But also make sure that when kids kick to a handstand too, because I see a lot of kids do it, is they try to be so precise with that T and all that lever stuff that there's they lose the flow. They lose the weight shift and flow. Okay, when there's a kick to a handstand, okay. Go ahead and do a handstand again. Okay. And she kind of has a little bit of a like pause in there again. You just want to see her lined up and then the weight going right down on that leg right up and tight. Okay. Again, because what's this whole thing for? Okay, this is for a round off in the front handspring. Okay, this is your chanko ball. This is all that stuff that's coming up in the end. So you got to make sure that they are actively moving everything forward. Okay. You don't want to see a pause right there. You'll see some kids will go here and then pause and stop. They're still lined up. They pause and then they kick in. And again, you can drill that because you can 
you know, make sure they're going through those positions, but make sure they understand how to flow it into a handstand. Okay, and one of the places you see that a lot too is on beam, because they, they're scared. So they stop, and then they hold, and they lever, and they kick, okay? And then just picture your kid running down the beam, eventually doing a round off, double back off beam, and there better not be a stop, and then a hold, and a lever, and then there better be some ability to attack and kick to a handstand. Make sure there's no angle tight. Okay. And that's another thing that, that comes up too is, you know, we talked about, we did one last year where we talked about drilling all the levers, put your blocks out, do all your levers, stop in your T, do a bunch of freeze like you have T. Stop and freeze. And make sure you're drilling this, bend your knee a little more, square your hip up just a little bit. Okay, so she's tight, she's lined up. She's trying to square this up. And do all those and do all those drills. But also make sure that when kids kick to a handstand too, because I see a lot of kids do it, is they try to be so precise with that T and all that lever stuff that there's they lose the flow. They lose the weight shift and flow. Okay, when there's a kick to a handstand, okay. Go ahead and do a handstand again. Okay. And she kind of has a little bit of a like pause in there to get. You just want to see her lined up and then the weight going right down on that leg and right up and tight. Okay. Again, because what's this whole thing for? Okay, this is for a round off in the front handspring. Okay, this is your Chenko ball. This is all that stuff that's coming up in the end. So you got to make sure that they are actively moving everything forward. Okay. You don't want to see a pause right there. You'll see some kids that go here and pause and stop. They're still lined up. Pause and then they kick in. And again, you can drill that because you can, you know, make sure they're going through those positions, but make sure they understand how to flow it into a handstand. Okay, and one of the places you see that a lot too is on beam because they, they're scared. So they stop and then they hold and they lever and they kick. Okay, and then just picture your kid running down the beam, eventually doing a round off, double back off beam, and there better not be a stop and then a hold and a lever, and then there better be some ability to attack and kick to a handstand. So do one. Okay, good. Um, so, make sure there's no angles kicking in right there. Make sure that the body is nice and tight and straight. These guys do tons and tons of handstands. Um, kick up there and we'll stop with them. Okay, squeeze tight, pinch. Pull your chest in right there. She can do a really, she has my best handstand right now, yeah, level it's, three. It's pretty yeah, exceptional it's pretty handstand for a seven-year-old right yeah. there. To yeah. be able to hold that shape and work that alignment. She's got the best one over here yeah. right now. Again, that's pretty yeah, not that's normal. drilled into her. <laughs> yeah, <that's good. laughs> She's not. I mean, the rest of them are kind of icky, icky still, you know. But it's, that comes from all those, like, laying flat on the floor, getting them against the wall, toes on the bar. Just spending a lot of time trying to create that kick up there. Make sure that the chest is in right here. Okay, so the chest is in. The hips are flat, tight, squeezed, tall and extended. Growing there, growing there, growing there, tight. She gets straight right there. She can hold that for like a week. Use your fingers. I've been teaching her how to use her fingers. I think she can hold it forever. You start to see her core get a little higher right there. See it? I have a question with her. Um, last year I couldn't get her vertical. So she came up with the idea of bending her back leg in her lunge and it made her push through faster. I don't know if that teach her terrible habits or not, but we went for it and it worked. But how bad is it? Down through here, you mean? Yeah. No, that's going to happen naturally. Okay. Yeah. Well, her idea, she goes, what if I bent my back leg? I was like, I don't know, let's try it. When you, when you, uh, well, a lot of times, like when you get into uh, wanting to add power to that and doing a round off, or even an aerial fall off, other things I know, Amy will do those faces where they'll actually bend, go down, and touch your back knee on the ground. Like, bend your knee, goes down to the ground like that, and then it comes up. Mm -hmm. okay. Right, and there's foam blocks, and there's all these little drills and stuff. So there has to be, when you drive, when you watch a kid run across the floor and land and hurdle, 
So we can talk more about like the hurdling and all that because that's why leaning forward on your hurdle is really bad because hold your leg up, you ride your lefty. Okay, bend this. Okay, if she leans forward too much on her hurdle and she lands on that back leg, that cannon's pretty much useless. You know what I mean? We've talked about that. When they get out in front of their back leg too much, then this isn't, it's not useful to land, which is why they want to land a hurdle a little more back on top of this leg. Then it can boom, just explode in there. Let's see, uh, let's see your handstand bridge. So again, the things we want to make sure we're uh, emphasizing here is it starts exactly like the handstand you just saw her do so well. All right, so don't let them sog through that first handstand. Make sure they get up and they're in this handstand. Now the first action we want to see is her chest stretch and her shoulders will actually move this way just a little bit, okay? And that's going to keep her in balance right there. You want them to just go from here and fall. You want a little bit of a stretch in the chest going that way, then the weight shifts back like that. Okay, now do a stand up. This way. Okay. So make sure that they're doing that nice tall handstand, good stretch in the chest and land. Do a front number. She can do one, it's just not real pretty. Where you stand up from your bridge, looking at your, your hands. Bridge and then stand up. Handstand bridge, stand up. She just pulled her head down. Okay. Again, that is a really important one. So again, level threes at this level, make sure you're, you're working on that. And again, you gotta be careful too because the core strength has to be there. You know what I mean? Make sure that they're, you're not trying to have a kid do a front limber and there's like nothing in her core and her back's just dead. And there has to be some tightness in there. What we've talked about before, a front limber and a back limber, okay, those are your, you take your tumbling all the way down to base level, it becomes a kick to handstand and those two skills. Okay, try that one more time. And there's a, you know tons of drills and stuff we can go over and stuff like that. But, um, Did you talk about the core and how to develop the core for that? Probably we've done too. conditioning stuff. Yeah. And stuff. Um, so again, the handstand really important in there. Um, the front limber, make sure you're training that. Even though it's not in the routine, make sure you guys are getting those done. Um, back limbers at this stage, okay, at least reaching back to a. Good enough. Can you do standing bridge? So good enough. Arms your spread. Spread your legs apart just a little bit. Squeeze your bottom. Yeah, I'm tall. Mm -hmm. That one was kind of interesting. Kick over. Mm -hmm. Tight. You're tall right there. So make sure you're teaching them how to do that good standing bridge where they're spread your legs apart. Okay, the same thing when they start. Nice and tall. Hips are tucked under. Tight here. Kind of keep Hips start to push forward at the same time the shoulders are reaching. So keep your stomach tight right there so they're going through that nice curved shape and then it keeps reaching down. And then uh, back limber will then shift over. See a one now. Keep shifting that over and then come up in a wave action to a handstand. Okay, so that back limber is tough too. All right, but again, all that back handspring stuff we always talk about, about coming up in a wave. Um, this is where they can start to learn it. Break that stuff down. Do it against the wall and come up in a wave. Do it onto a mat, like a low mat like this. back limber at this stage, back walkovers too, once they can do that stuff. Um, and then the round up back handspring. Taught too early. Taught too early, you're at it. Again, keep doing them, you know, on the tramp, on the tramp, on the tramp. Get in position. 
Good that is, and then you bring it out here, and it goes like you do. You know what I mean? So again, you have to do it. You have to do it, but keep it minimal. Keep them over there. She does that fifty-seven thousand times. Do it on the on the red train on that one. Okay, so turn around there, Gruber. Do a standing back hand. a little harder on that than it is on the yellow tramp. So you're going to see her make some more errors with that. She's got to get a little stronger, a little better body. So just do one more. Same snap to hollow shape at the end. Go hollow, and then open it and snap to hollow. See, just kind of four feet a little bit. Like that. And that's all this natural stuff. Fifty back. So do those separately over there. Drill your cartwheel step-ins. Yeah, yeah, we have, we've talked about it. Okay. Yeah, we will. Yeah. Um, do a couple of seconds. Yeah, it's a Oh, everybody is teaching. So, so you can tell right here that you know this athlete's been really disciplined really good to start to learn a cartwheel step in and not break her hips down right here. Push, she's learning to push off her hands. And she's, you're gonna this one. Okay, she comes off her hands right here. She stays right here. Right here. Her chest is hollow when it comes in and she's tucking her hip under right here. And she's got nice flat hips right through there. Do it again. Do a standing ground up. Yeah. Does it look like that? Yeah. And that's that's not her fault, you know what I mean? That comes because the round off is hard. Alright, it's gotta take more leg drive, she's gotta understand how to block off her hand a little bit more. Okay, and so that's why